Hi, this is Bill Punch. This video is one of a series of videos used to support Michigan State University's introduction to computer science using Python CSC231. This particular video will cover uh, a second kind of compound statement, repetition. This is our first version of the repetition statement. Let's go ahead and get started. If you'll remember, we had drawn some diagrams previously of sequential and uh, if execution. Here is a picture of what we call while execution or repetitive execution. We would execute a series of Python statements. And then like the if statement, we would execute a Boolean expression. If the Boolean, is expression, Boolean expression is true, we would execute the series of statements associated with it. But at the end of the statement, we would come back to the Boolean expression and reevaluate it. And we would continue to do this, evaluate the Boolean expression, and when the Boolean expression is true, execute the statement list over and over and over again until eventually the Boolean expression becomes false and we pick up with the rest of the Python program. You can you remember what our general compound statement looks like. Uh, a keyword, a Boolean expression, a colon, and an indented series of statements. For our while loop, this is what the while loop looks like. The keyword in this situation is while, followed by the Boolean expression, followed by the colon, and then again an indented series of statements. As I said before, we test the Boolean. If it's true, we execute the uh, uh, suite of statements. At the end, then we would go back and re-execute the Boolean over and over and over again until the Boolean becomes false. At the time that the Boolean becomes false, then we execute the rest of the statements. There's a couple of things to note. It's important to note that the Boolean is tested first. Right? Before the loop ever runs, if it's initially false, the loop never runs. Second, the Boolean is retested at the start of every iteration. It should be the case, but it might be true that it never becomes false. If that's true, if the Boolean never becomes false in your loop, then you get an infinite loop. These are both bad situations. Here's an example while loop or a while statement. We have some count that's set to five, and as long as that count is greater than zero, we're gonna execute this series of statements. When we finish, just like everything else, we're gonna pick up with a statement that follows at the different indentation level of the while loop. Let's go ahead and run it. So the first time through, we say that the print of the counting integer is five, that's what it started at, and then every time we go through the loop, very importantly, count goes down by one. So at the second iteration, the count becomes four, then three, then two, then one. At the end, count becomes zero. Zero is not greater than zero. The loop ends and we're moving on. In general, there are three things you need to do in our while loop, which we did here. We need to initialize the loop outside so that it will start. We did that here. We set count equal to five so that we could get started. Two, during the operation of the loop, the counting variable should change. We did that here so that it went down by one so that eventually the Boolean would become false and we get out of our loop. Here's a simple factorial example. Factorial is represented multiple ways, but essentially the factorial of a value is uh, the factorial of five, usually represented by the exclamation point is equal to five times four, times three, times two, and then we don't need to, but times one. So the product from one up to the value is the factorial, and the way we can express that is easily done here. The factorial of n is equal to whatever the factorial of n minus one was times n. We would do that over and over again until n becomes one, in which case the value is zero. Here's our factorial calculation. We take in an original value, say five. We remember that. We set a count variable equal to that original value and we start our factorial value at one. And as long as count is greater than one, which starts out to be the original value, the factorial result 
is equal to the factorial result, which starts at 1, times the count value, which starts with the original value, 5. And then count goes down by 1, and we go around. Now the factorial value is equal to 5 times the new count, which is 4, and count goes down by 1. Now our factorial is 20 times 3, and count goes down by 1. And factorial is now 60 times 2, and count goes down by 1. And then count is no longer greater than 1, and we print out the original value of the factorial, which should be 120, which in fact it is. If we make it a really big value, like 40, remember we said that integer values are exact and we get really big numbers, there's a really big number. A little detail, there's a special kind of assignment operator called compound assignment. It's better to sort of show you than to tell you about it. You can shortcut an expression like this, my int is equal to my int plus 1, by putting a plus in front of the equal sign. You can shorten my int equals my int minus 1 by saying my int minus equal 1. You can shorten any operation by putting the operation you want to do to the, oper to, to the variable and the value you want to put it on. So when I say my int is equal to plus minus 1, I say, look, I want to make my int go up by 1. I want to my make my int go down by 1. I want to make my int times 1. I want to make my int divided by 1. It's a simple shortcut. If we rewrite the uh, factorial of values here, you can see that we want factorial results to go up by multiplication by count, and I want count to go down by 1. These are exactly equivalent to these expressions. They're just shortcuts.